Hi, hello, it's me, Sassy TikToker, the one and only. Eh. <laughs> so I wanted to check in with y'all. Got some info on Woods and Quarter Horses. These people. Shame on you! Get lost! The Fayetteville Observer wrote an article yesterday about them. <gasps> Remember how they said we we're all going to look like idiots? We have nothing to hide and the truth will come to light and make everyone online look like idiots. Well, we're not the ones that look like idiots. I'll just put it that way. News. Three falls seized in Cumberland County showed signs of injury, affidavit states. F.T. Norton Fayetteville Observer. Published 5.15 a.m. Eastern August 28, 2023. Three young falls showed signs of injury prior to the removal last week of seven horses from a Cumberland County horse farm following allegations of animal abuse, an affidavit states. On August 21, officers with Cumberland County Animal Services removed a total of five falls, ranging in age from two to five months old, and two nursing mares from Wits End Quarter horses in Cedar Creek, officials said. The removals came after a video surfaced online showing a foal being dragged by a vehicle and beaten purportedly on the property at 4849 Enniskillen Road. In an affidavit requesting a warrant to seize the animals, Officer Kirsten Long, Enforcement Officer for Animal Services, recounted the events that led up to the seizures. The affidavit states that Officer Christy Barber first visited Wits End Quarter Horses on August 15 after the allegations of equine cruelty were leveled against the owners. ASO Barber observed the reported three-month-old foal on the property to have lacerations abrasions under both ears and under the muzzle, along the jawline that are conducive to halter burns due to excessive pressure, pushing or pulling, the affidavit states. The owners defended their current method of training for halter breaking and walking with a lead line. The following day, the record states, Animal Services received a higher quality video that led officers to believe the foal presented to them as the one seen in the video may not have been the same animal. During a subsequent visit to the farm on August 18, the affidavit states, officers counted 29 horses on the property and that same day, the agency received four additional videos. The most concerning, due to their vulnerability, is the five foals on the property. Three of the foals have injuries that are consistent with the method of training used by the owners, Long wrote in requesting the warrant that a Cumberland County magistrate ultimately signed. Due to the vulnerable age of the foals and the owners defending their current practice of training, Cumberland County Animal Services is requesting permission to seize the five foals on the property and two mares that are nursing two of the foals for imminent danger. The foals identified in the affidavit as Beth, Paisley, Opal, Faith and Spot and the mares, Baby Mama and Dana, are in the custody of Animal Services, Director Elaine Smith said last week. She said Animal Services officers were monitoring the remaining animals on the farm. As of Friday, no charges had apparently been filed by the Cumberland County Sheriff's Office in the case. And to ride to ride, well, we haven't heard very much from him. Cyril Berto's court date of August 22 has been bumped to September 12, and supposedly he's requesting a Zoom call. We did know where the horses were, so I'm gonna leak that, and he moved them, so we're not really sure where they are. We have an idea. We're not gonna say because we don't want him to just keep moving them. Like, if he's away from them, then that is good. He is still the legal owner. And we cannot be harassing wherever these horses are, the people that are caring for them, because he's not doing it. We know that for sure. So we'll just chill with that, okay? We'll just chill. He's possibly back in Austin, and I'll tell you, it's because I found a couple of ads on Facebook public groups. So this is all public information of him advertising a room for rent in his house. One posted on Austin Roommates and one posted on Greater Austin Area, Housing and Roommate Finder. One room in a three-bedroom, two-bathroom. Pet-friendly house, Windsor Hills. Hi guys, I'm renting one rooms in my house. I'll be living in the master bedroom with my dog, Shadow. And another roommate, 25 female who works and studies. House is fully furnished. Maid comes once a month. 12 minutes to downtown, 12 minutes to the domain. 
any gender, must be clean, 20 to 30 years old. No couples. No kids. Details. Room 1. $875 per month. 13 by 11 plus closet. Unfurnished. Available now, one year lease preferred. $50 more per month for six month lease. 420 friendly. Parking. Driveway or street parking available. Utilities include Wi Fi. Maid. Other. $125 per month. One month refundable deposit and background check required. Let's take a tour of the house. Also, I want to look at his LinkedIn profile. Let's look at it before and let's look at it now, after he's done this trip. This is before. This is after. Let's take a closer look at the About section of each. Cyril Berto, King of Freight, AI Fleet, McGill University, DeSaudel's Faculty of Management. Austin, Texas, United States, Cyril Berto, Operations Manager at AI Fleet, Planning and Fleet, Management Expert, McGill University, DeSaudel's Faculty of Management, AI Fleet, Austin, Texas, United States, About, I Get Shit Done, About, As an Operations Manager at AI Fleet, I led a team of fleet managers and drivers to optimize revenue and minimize dwell time for a fleet of trucks across continental U.S. Before joining AI Fleet, I was an area manager for Amazon, overseeing all operations of Amazon Fresh DC, and leading a team of three assistant managers and 50 associates. In March of 2023, I quit my job and rode two horses from Texas to Washington in 117 days to fulfill a family tradition fourth generation. Reach out. Uh, it's safe to say he's probably unemployed right now. And, uh, if anybody does a Google search on him, like potential employers, they're going to find out some stuff that might not be so flattering. So I don't know if that was a good idea to put that on there. I don't I don't think he wants to add that into his resume. Also, it's been mentioned that he might decide that this was all a big mistake and I need to delete all my stuff and get rid of all the evidence, delete all my social media and all that. I'm not sure if he will do that because he's so delusional. He thinks he's done the right thing. He thinks think he thinks he's done something amazing. Some something to be proud of, something to win a medal for or some like that so I'm sorry but the skills that you claim in your LinkedIn profile you did not display any of that during your trip you failed buddy you failed I mean there's no other way to say it you failed Cyril did not make it to Spokane his original plan was Seattle but later changed it to Spokane. He barely made it past the border from Idaho to Washington and stopped at Gateway Regional Park. Gateway Regional Park is located in Liberty Lake, Washington. Liberty Lake is a city. So Cyril made it to Liberty Lake, not Spokane. The distance between Liberty Lake and Spokane is significant with Spokane Valley in between. 
Here, we can see the areas of each city notated by different colors. Spokane Valley is an entire city separating Spokane and Liberty Lake. I hope that clears up any confusion about where Cyril ended the trip. Falcons Project has found two more cases. We're working on two more cases right now. One is with the same sheriff that Woodson Quarter Horses dealt with, because it is a rescue. Although the 501C was revoked in April. And another one is a, a really big case, big, 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 a lot of horses involved. But you know what, while I was doing my research, I found a lot of cases that have happened recently. They don't make news. They don't make it big. These stories don't. And I'm going to start digging into some of those because I was shocked at how much news coverage there wasn't, but there actually was a little bit, enough for me to find out that there was a story there, but not enough to get the word out to help anyone who wants to be involved in these efforts of saving horses to recognize when there's a problem, to know what to do about it, to know what information they need to gather, what evidence, who they need to send that to, who they need to be in contact with, blah, blah, blah. Beep, bop, boop. First of all, everybody wants to know to Raw to Ride what's going on. His arraignment has been delayed until um, September the 12th. He's trying to get it as a Zoom call. Um, that has not been approved or denied as of yet. Um, we're kind of in a waiting limbo at this time. So the information that you, you guys have right now, that is the information that there is. Um, the horses are just chilling somewhere. We think we know where they are. Um, we won't release that information because he did move them last time. Someone else actually released the information. They found him. Um, so that's that's that. The next thing is that um, we do have two other active cases right now that we are working on removing horses from the possession of the people that have them. Um, I can't say too much about either one of the cases, but that one is a rescue that is not providing veterinary care. They have shot multiple horses in the head on their property. Um, allegedly, they were did not die right away. It is not illegal to uh, humanely euthanize horses on your property in the state that they're in. However, there's just a lot of bad stuff going on over there. Um, I'm not going to say who they are or where they are yet because we don't want to bring national attention as of right now. She is trying to let people help her rehome these horses. Um, now, she has stated this before and then didn't do it or came back and tried to take those horses back from the people that had adopted them. So that one's kind of a we're just trying to be quiet on it right now and just give you that little synopsis. Another is a um, person in another state that has over 100 starving horses, um, a graveyard of 15 to 30 horses, many of them which are foals. They're very emaciated, um, and he keeps moving them around and hiding them. So um, right now we're trying to relocate where he is with those horses so that we can get law enforcement out there. He does have 28 counts of felony animal abuse already on his record. He's already not supposed to be owning horses um, and he is just not listening to that. So as of right now, those are the two cases that we're on outside of the two raw to ride and the wit's end. So now let's get into wit's end. Even though law enforcement is investigating this, we can't let them sweep it under the rug in the end of the day. Right now, there's no charges brought, even though the veterinarians have confirmed that there are burn marks and um, ligature marks from them dragging the other foals. So they have seven horses that are removed right now, but there were 29 horses on property, which means there's still 22 left that could be suffering at the hands of Wits and. Um, we do know that they have been to multiple states and changed their name multiple times. That Wits End themselves, that name is newer to the quarter horse world. 
Um, everybody was kind of wondering how the heck they popped up so quickly. But they are doubling down on that this is normal training methods. I can guarantee you, as an equestrian, um, that is not how you train a foal if you don't want lifetime trauma and potentially lifetime issues in their neck and in their pole, dragging a foal around, waterboarding, beating them. And at one point, they even ran that foal over with their four-wheeler. Um, these are not normal training methods. But they're doubling down on it and calling all of us are just idiots, right? Sounds familiar. Um, don't give up calling law enforcement and ACS in um, Lafayetteville, North Carolina. Make sure to keep calling. Let them know that we are not going to drop this until there's charges brought and that those horses are removed from them. Um, as for our 501C, we are working on it. We are working on getting it set up so that we can take donations. We've had people ask us, why do you need donations? I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Um, this is not for us. We're not getting paid by it. This is going to be... A put into a 501c where you're able to hold the 501c accountable. In fact, as a public and you're donating, you're able to request records if you'd like to. Um, the reason that we need funding is first of all, boots on the ground, right? We, are, we utilize a lot of local people in order to get us information and evidence. Um, one of the cases like I just spoke about with the 100 horses that are being moved around, one of the last properties that they're on, they were on has graves dug that are going to need to be dug back up in order to take out those carcasses, out those skeletons, count out how many were dead. Um, and again, a lot of them are foals. So there's a lot. Um, and that costs money. Someone has to pay for that. Not to mention when we do find those hundred horses, um, which we're very close to finding right now, we're right on his tail. Once we do, we're going to have to have boots on the ground to trailer them to places, um, to rescues, to ASPCA, to the other rescues in the area that are able to accommodate that many horses that are not halter broke, that are feral. Um, not to mention the rescue that is in the other state. We are trying to help them rehome all of the horses that they have on property as well. And it's going to take manpower, gas, it's gonna take hay, and a lot of these horses are gonna be needing vetting. We want to make sure that we're not just dropping these horses onto a rescue that might not be able to afford all of the things that these horses are going to need in order to survive this whole ordeal. Um, so that's where donations come in. We haven't asked for donations up to this point. We have been self-funding, um, but there are going to be some things that are just way too expensive for any normal person to pull out of their own pocket. I hope that's understandable. Um, I've really not wanted to ask for donations for this reason because I know that we might get backlash on it, but having it go into an account that you guys can hold accountable and while you see these horses being rescued, we will be doing updates on them. We will be showing you the care that they're getting, um, what is wrong with them, and hopefully maybe even being able to place them in homes across the U.S. after all of the legal stuff is done. Um, so that is our goal. And that is the reason why 501Cs like us, um, or like what we're trying to do, what we are attempting to do, we need a lot of public support and able to do that. I think I'm going to start posting some of my own TikToks that I've made because my TikTok channel, my TikTok account is different than this YouTube channel. And it's a lot more about making people happy, showing things that are funny, things that are cute, things that will brighten your day a little bit. So it's a big difference from what this is. Now, how do I do both of those on one channel? I don't know. I'm going to figure it out. But I tell you what, with the amount of people that mistreat horses and animals in general, and the lack of global animal welfare laws. I will never run out of content for this stuff. 
Isn't that disgusting? I wish I did. I wish I ran out of content and I would have to do something completely different. Like how great everyone is being to their animals. How people are doing the right thing. But they're not. And I just want to make something really, really, really clear. Two Rod to Ride does not know what my Instagram account is. I doubt that he knows what my TikTok account is because I banned him. And I have not one time commented on a single video or Instagram post he has ever made. Not once. Nor have I tried to contact him personally. Nor any of his family members. Now remember, these videos do get sassy. Why else am I called sassy TikToker? Is that how I am in real life? No. This is the side of me that I want to bring out in real life, but I can't. So I just do it here in front of camera because is the camera going to get mad at me? <laughs> no. But remember, if you love the sassiness, great. Please consider liking and subscribing. If you don't like the sassiness, okay. This is how I talk. If you don't like my voice, okay. Somebody left a comment saying it was obnoxious. Well, the fact that your breathing is obnoxious. The fact that you can function enough to leave a comment on my video that's rude and disrespectful is obnoxious. So let's talk about obnoxious. Ooh. I swear. So you may have noticed little miss Raggedy Ann and her little twin sister right there and a couple others. So uh, the story behind that is that they are haunted dolls, and if you leave me nasty comments, I'm just going to let the dolls handle it. Okay? Yes. But as always, if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. Okay, love you, bye.